Have you ever struggled in your faith because you felt like God was not listening to your prayers? Have you ever thought that it could be that your prayers are hindered or the connection broken between you and God? Prayer is an amazing privilege in the Christian life. Prayer could be defined as communication with God by the spoken word, a, the pen, your thoughts, a song, or even a heavenward glance. It truly is a blessing to be a child of God and to be able to talk to the Lord and to make requests to Him that are on our hearts. As a matter of fact, the Bible in many places encourages the believer to pray. God truly is pleased when his children come to him, oftentimes with childlike faith and confidence. God always has an answer for each prayer that his children pray to him. Sometimes God tells us yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says wait. Then sometimes God tells us, I've got something better for you. When it comes to prayer, there are no rules about posture, time, length, style, volume, or place. These are simply determined by the direction of the Holy Spirit as he impresses your heart in prayer. We know that the Bible teaches us that we are to let our request be made known unto God. But the struggle within occurs when our prayers seem to be unanswered. Have you ever wondered why that sometimes you feel disconnected from God when you try to pray? Or have you ever wondered why that there are times in which you don't even have a desire to pray? Many times when this happens, we simply ignore it, try to brush it off, or simply turn away from talking to God for a while. In moments like this, have you ever considered that it could be a problem on your end? Have you ever considered that it could be a problem in your own life? Have you ever considered that it could be some type of hindrance that is causing your prayers to be disconnected from God? I want to speak to you for a few minutes on this subject. Hindrances to prayer. Hindrances to prayer. The Bible offers to us some clues to why our prayers are hindered and disconnected from God at times. With that said, I want to point out to you this evening several hindrances to our prayers so that we can get in a position to see our prayers answered instead of hindered. The first hindrance to prayer is unconfessed sin. Unconfessed sin. In Psalm 66, verse 18, the Bible says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. The psalmist is talking about sin that we have covered sin that we have decided to continue in, sin that we have made an excuse about in our hearts. Unconfessed sin hinders our prayers in such a way that the Lord will not hear our prayers. Let me ask you, do you have any unconfessed sin in your life right now? If you do, confess it to the Lord and forsake it that your prayers be not hindered. Secondly, there is the hindrance of indifference towards the Holy Bible. Indifference towards the Holy Bible. Proverbs 28 verse 9 says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Many today want the blessings of God while rejecting the boundaries of God. Our prayers will be hindered when we are not living according to God's word. 
You see why would someone want the Lord to work in their life if they're not interested in allowing his word to work in their hearts? The Bible is God's final authority for our lives. And when we reject his word in our lives, then he rejects our prayers as a result. So align your life with the word of God so that your prayers will not be hindered. Thirdly, there is the hindrance of selfish motives. James chapter 4 verse number 3 says, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may uh, spend it on your own pleasures. The word amiss means wrong motives. Specifically in this verse, James is addressing the hindrance of praying according to our own selfish desires. Any time that we pray, we should consider whether or not our motives are pure. We should ask ourselves if our prayer is truly a need or if it is a selfish request. If our prayers are hindered, then we should reevaluate our requests. Fourthly, there is the hindrance of unbelief. Unbelief. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 24 say, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. These verses spoken by our Lord urge us to pray in faith, which means believing and trusting God. Praying in faith means that you trust in Him to do what is according to His will and what is right. We are to pray believing that God is able. God wants to bless us and he wants to give us some good things in life. Yet, when we doubt him, we hinder our prayers. So, dear friend, ask in faith, believe in faith, and wait in faith for God to answer your prayers. Fifthly, there is the hindrance of an unforgiving spirit. In Mark chapter 11, verses 25 through 26, the Bible says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Here the Lord Jesus gives a scenario of an individual praying and asking for forgiveness, but the individual here is unwilling in his own heart to forgive someone else. Ask yourself, have I got something against another person in my heart? Ask yourself, am I holding on and holding out on forgiving someone else? If your answer was yes, or maybe, then ask the Lord to help you forgive that individual so that your fellowship with God is not hindered. Unforgiveness in the heart of a Christian hinders the answer to his or her prayers. A grudge, a root of bitterness, or even hate may be blocking the very answer to your prayer that you're praying right now. God forgives us And with the same forgiveness that he extends to us through Jesus Christ, we should extend to others that same forgiveness so that our prayers are not hindered. Sixthly, there is the hindrance of not knowing God's will. Not knowing God's will. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 through 15 say, Now, this is the confidence that we have in him 
that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. These verses speak about praying according to God's will. The will of God is what he desires, what he has purposed, what he has planned for our lives. It could be that you are praying according to what you desire, what you purpose, what you plan in life without considering what it may be that God has so purposed and planned for your life. Don't forget, we know God's will. We know what God desires. We know what God has planned by and through his holy word. Find out what the scripture says about the matter you are praying to make sure that you are praying according to his will. It just might be that you need to readjust your wishes and your desires so that God will answer your prayer. Seventhly, there is the hindrance of broken fellowship with a spouse. Broken fellowship with a spouse. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7 says, Husbands, likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. In this passage, the Apostle Peter is writing about the relationship of a husband to his wife and a wife to her husband. This particular verse that I've just read tells us that a husband's prayers can be hindered if he is not being understanding with his wife. The word understanding here is used to tell husbands to live with their wife in a way where you understand who she is and how God made her. Understand her value, understand her position in the home, understand her needs, and understand her weaknesses as well. Be understanding with your wife calls for the husband to exercise wisdom, love, and patience with his wife, even during intense or stressful moments, so that your prayers will not be hindered. I believe that this principle can be applied both ways to both the husband and the wife. So couples, May you stay in fellowship with each other so that you can remain in fellowship with Almighty God through prayer. Our God is a holy God and prayer is that divine vehicle that he has so chosen for us to communicate with him. Indeed, prayer offered by a Christian harboring sin is akin to a plane without wings a car without wheels, or a boat without a rudder. Make no mistake about it, God does want to hear your prayers. But when we disregard his word, he quickly stops up his ears to our prayers. We must never be contented in life when our prayers are not reaching the throne of God. So is there a solution? If our prayers are being hindered, yes, yes, God has given us a solution. Seek his face and make changes according to the scriptures. Ask God to forgive you and to cleanse you. Get right with those around you and make sure your life is lined up with the word of God. Then as a result, you will experience not a hindered prayer line, but a fervent and vibrant connection to God in prayer. God bless you.